Hi, Deirdre McNamara here from Letterkenny IT. We're taking a look at the Aloha Table Service Manager um, and we're in a classroom environment. So for the classroom environment, we're going to restore the data uh, to bring us back to the original. So I double click on that and you can see it's working down here. In a live situation, do not do this. It'll bring, it'll restore all the defaults and which might not be what you'd want. Um, to open up the back of house system, I'm double cl clicking here on the Table Service Manager and waiting and I have it here now to log in I click on file login and I type in my password and in this case it's 500 and 500 and click on login uh, because I've restored the data it'll ask me to reset my password uh, which I do okay um, I'm taking a looking look at adding um, some uh, new nibbles menu uh, to that will be available in the bar and we want to add a few items to it uh, and then create a sub menu and then put that sub menu onto the restaurant menu. Okay, so I start off by creating the items. So I'm going to click on uh, maintenance, uh, menu and items. Okay, uh, now we need to create a, a new section for these. Um, so I'm going to see where there's space in here. So I'm looking at the numbers here. I've got modifiers. I'm just looking for a gap in the numbers in here. So you can see from uh, this on, if I go up to 500, there's a space in there. So I'm going to type in the new number and press enter. And I'm going to just, uh, to make a little grouping, I'm just going to type in and that this is just creating a section so it'll be easy to find these items. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to put it in here and put it in here. This is no technical function. It's just an easy way in the drop down list to find uh, all of these items. So I'm going to click on save. I now want to actually create my first item. So I move the number up by one and press enter and you can see it's clear. Nothing else is using that number because it cleared when I press enter. Uh, okay, so uh, in here we want to uh, put in the uh, actual names. So, so uh, the EPOS uh, button is what is the same as the short name and what we have in here are seaweed rolls. Okay, maximum of 15 characters in this one here. The chit name is what appears on the kitchen printer. And again, it's seaweed rolls. And what appears on the actual customers or guest check is down here. And in here, we type the more marketing uh, name, Donegal seaweed rolls. And it's a nibbles platter, so we can just put that in there. Now, uh, what we need to do is we need to assign uh, the tax rate. So um, it's 13.5% in Ireland, or the VAT rate, uh, or sales tax uh, in other countries. Um, that's what we're going to do at the moment. We'll worry about pricing later. We're going to create a price level uh, later on. Um, but for the moment, uh, we're going to uh, leave it at that. OK, and we'll click on Save. OK. Now we'll go to the next one uh, and two and press enter and you can see it clears and in here is the EPOS, so Mexican nibbles. Oh. And, and in here is the guest and we'll say Action. Okay, make sure you put on uh, the VAT rate. Um, so <coughs> let's click uh, save to put that one in and go with number three. And in here we've got uh, cheese nibbles. Again, put on uh, the VAT rate and we click on uh, save. Okay, so we've created our three items now. Uh, what we need to do is create a sub menu. So we're going to click on maintenance, menu, 
and submenus. Okay, uh, at the moment there are four uh, submenus uh, within this uh, particular system. So we want to create a new one. So we'll just go to the last one here, Oop. Uh, the last one here, and move up a number. Okay, so that clears it out. And in here we'll type in nibbles menu. Okay. Uh, nibbles menu comes up uh, automatically and to this uh, sub menu we want to add the three items we've just created so we double click in here and in here we go scroll down and find our nibbles and you can see here that little header made it easy to find them so there is the first one and click on OK and we can select the second one oops modifiers I've lost them there we go Mexican and OK. And OK, so we've got our three items uh, up here uh, at the moment. That's fine. This is a sub menu. It has been created, but this sub menu does not yet appear anywhere uh, on a main menu. So it actually won't have any function yet. OK, so I'm going to click on save to uh, save that. Now we need to put it onto a particular uh, menu. So click on maintenance menu menus. And in here, in this particular establishment, there is only one menu, so there could be a bar menu or a you know, restaurant one or a cafe type menus in here. In this establishment, there's only one. So double click in here and choose your new Nibbles menu and click on OK. OK, so we've set up the three items uh, on the sub menu, the Nibbles uh, sub menu, uh, and we've added that to the main menu, the restaurant main menu. We now want to take a look at uh, adding modifiers because each of these can be purchased at different sizes. So to do that, we're first of all going to set up the modifiers and actually the modifiers are set up as items. So we click on maintenance and then menu and then items. And I know that in this system, all of the modifiers at the moment are down at the end. So down here. So I'm going to see what the last number is that's already been used. And it's in here. So I'm going to go, maybe I'll start at 20 just to leave a bit of space. So that's uh, be down the end of the list. And uh, in here, we'll put in a uh, regular size. So it's regular size. Oh, sorry, I forgot to actually type press enter. So just press enter and then it empties out. And in here, type in regular. And uh, the chit name will be the same. And the long name. Uh, and we'll put in 4 1. Okay, it's a maximum of 25 characters uh, in there. Obviously, there's no VAT name or, or a primary tax against this. Uh, and we'll go with on the modifiers tab, we'll just leave that blank. And over here on the price tab, we'll actually put in a price of uh, zero and we'll leave that at zero. Okay, and then hit save. Now, the next one will be 21. And this is a, a platter for two people. Okay, and we'll call this to share. Spelled correctly. And the price in this uh, we'll set, it's an additional 250. And we'll hit save. And uh, we'll come to uh, three. And in here will be group. And the price in here will be an additional five euros. OK, so we have our modifiers set up. What we haven't done is put them into a, a modifier group. So click on maintenance and menu and modifier groups. Now, here are the existing modifier groups. We need to add a new one. So we we'll go to the last one here and then move up a number, which is number three. And everything empties out. So in here, we'll say which size from that menu are we choosing. And in here, we double click in here and then we add the different modifiers we've just created. Um, and uh, it's zero, the price is going on, and that's okay. 
and double click in here if they want to make it for two people we choose the two share here and we'll use you can see it's come up here in gray you need to actually select use item price and click on OK and down here you can see 250 has gone on and double click in here and choose the group share choose use item price and OK and again you can see the price uh, in here uh, and hit save. So we've created a modifier grouping but we haven't associated that with any of our items so let's click on maintenance menu and items and go down now to uh, the seaweed rolls and attach the modifiers so in here choose the modifier tab and in here scroll down and choose nibble size and save attach it to the next one which is Mexican and save and the last one is the cheesy and nibble size and save Okay, and now those modifiers uh, are attached and also there'll be an additional charge if anyone wants uh, a larger size. We now want to change the message down on the bottom of the guest receipt. Um, so we click on maintenance and messages and guest check. So at the moment there's only um, two messages there. We're going to create a new one. So we'll just make it number three and we'll give it a name and we'll say good morning okay and the title will be good morning and down the bottom we'll say enjoy your day okay so this is the message uh, it has an ID in here and we click on save now we need to make sure that this uh, message appears at the right time so we click on maintenance we click on system and we click on events we need to add an event so we choose this button here uh, the event type we're going to do is number 16 which is set guest check message that's fine it'll happen daily and it's going to happen at 7 colon 00 in the morning and we click on OK Oh, sorry it needs a zero before the seven so zero seven zero zero and okay now which message do we want the good morning message to appear and okay the next task I want to do is to set up a new employee um, so we'll click on maintenance labor employees and we can see the uh, employees that are currently on the system here to add a new employee we'll type in a new number so I'm going to put in um, 0800 actually I don't need the zero first 800 and press enter and you can see it's emptied out so there's nobody already uh, in that code we can use uh, an employee number up here and I can go with 800 again and you just type in the details so Pat, um, and date of birth seventy the date that they started okay and you can put in the address uh, etc now you need to tell the system what level they're working at so in here we click on the job code tab okay and in the access levels we'll put them in they're a regular staff member we can put them in as staff member and um, sometimes uh, you can set them up as a training person so actually what they do on the system doesn't work uh, or you can actually set them up as a server so we'll set them up as a server and we'll uh, give them access to the level of staff which doesn't give them access to some of the back end stuff and we click uh, save okay the next thing we want to have a look at is reporting so let's click on reports and sales and sales and we'll look at a weekly sales report okay if there was a number of options down here you could choose current week this system has only just been started so there is no additional dates um, and uh, the reporting formats we only have one at the moment so we can change the settings of this if we click on settings these are the items we already have on our report if we didn't want for example refunds to appear we could click on refunds and we can push it back into the list over here
If there's anything on the list here you want to take a look at, for example, tips by payment type, you select over this side and you click and it comes over here. This is the heading that the column will have. And we can just, for example, go card slash cash because we might like that to be our heading uh, in the actual save report, sales report, and then click save. Another thing we can do here is change uh, where it's exported to, because often you'll download it and bring it into Excel. So you click on export settings. You look at the last backslash down here, and in here you could, for example, type in week 20.csv. OK, uh, and uh, we can hit save and that puts uh, that in uh, into your system and then hit close. Now, we've made a lot of changes on this system. We now need to update the front of house. So if you click on utilities and refresh date, and remember, don't do this while people are in the middle of service. So make sure it's a time when the EPOS systems aren't being used and you click on refresh data and yes. Uh, and it'll upload the front of house system. OK, that's the end of this video.